Okay, good afternoon or possibly morning for those of you that are all the way on the West Coast. Thank you very much for joining me today for a 20 minute webinar on UVC disinfection, uh, the pure UVC system here on what it is, um, on why UVC is a wonderful solution for your facility now in the time of COVID-19 and into the future as well. I hope that I find you uh, well, I hope I find you healthy, that you, your, uh, your loved ones, and your employees or uh, co-workers are all doing well um, in work and in safety. So let's get started here. My name is Dan Lippin. I'm the Director of Development at Pure UVC. There I am in charge of marketing, educational initiatives like this one right here, and I am on the board for system development as well. The system development part, partially because I have a background in electrical engineering, a bachelor's of science from Rutgers University, and partially because this is such an interesting system that I uh, inserted myself into the process there to make sure that I could be involved and could be uh, sure that we're providing you with the best possible solution that we can. So, what brings us here today? And why are we looking at UVC technology in the first place? The question is we have to make sure that our facilities are protected against coronavirus. Whether it's a school, an office, a restaurant, whatever it is, states across the US are mandating protection against the disease. Now, as I mentioned before, this will be very handy now uh, in order to get our operations up and running. But in the future as well, there will be benefits that we'll talk about in the future. So regardless of coronavirus or not, our facilities are impacted by pathogens, notably by viruses, mold, and bacteria. Viruses like the coronavirus, they evolve quickly inside the body, making treatment incredibly difficult. It's one of the reasons why there is not a vaccine for coronavirus yet. The best way to treat viruses is protective maintenance before they can infect the body, get them out of the facilities. Mold, mold is going to cause allergies, asthma, migraines, respiratory issues. This is during the normal course of the year, the number one deterrent inside a facility. It's what makes people not feel good inside a facility. And finally, we have bacteria. So bacteria are those germs that go and cause a slew of different sicknesses. Bacteria can live on surfaces for days and days and days. And the more that there are of any of these pathogens in a space, the higher the probability of catching a disease is. So a solution that can go, uh, as my coworker Angela loves to say, uh, she calls these the big three. So a solution that will be uh, they'll work well against the big three is something that we need to ensure we have. So we have a question here, and how clean is clean? If we were trying to go and disinfect our facilities, what does it mean to have a clean facility? Well, let's talk a little bit about what happens in our facilities. So first we have pathogens being transmitted onto surfaces and being suspended in the air through people walking into the building from catching those pathogens elsewhere and bringing them in. Now we have different types of pathogens. So cold and flu viruses can live on surfaces for up to 48 hours. Some bacteria can live on surfaces for months. And researchers say a coronavirus can live on surfaces for up to five days. This means that there needs to be regular disinfection because these heavy hitting diseases will find their way onto surfaces or be suspended in the air and stay there for an extended period of time. So a daily disinfection protocol is what will be best in this time of coronavirus. And quite frankly, it'll be very beneficial going forward to go and battle the seasonal flus, to go and battle future epidemics. And hopefully this isn't the case, but future pandemics as well. So let's talk about ultraviolet lighting. This is something that when we first started doing these webinars months back, people were first hearing about from us, seeing ultraviolet lighting and asking, how is this light a disinfection solution? 
it's amazing how quickly things have come. At this point, you are most likely on this webinar because you have been hearing about ultraviolet lighting and want to learn more. So ultraviolet lighting is, a, is not a new technology. It has been used for disinfection purposes for well over 100 years. In fact, the first major large-scale disinfection purpose of uh, UV lighting was in 1910 in Marseille, France as a water treatment facility. And ever since then, it's been used in hospitals, in research labs, in industrial food processing plants, and water treatment and air filtration. Now in the news lately, there's been some applications of UV light. So this is something that is being adapted quite readily in this time. And so I'll go through these different pictures right here. If you look at the top left, this is a New York City subway. So the MTA uh, has adopted UV technology in order to disinfect the subway cars. Uh, I live about 30 minutes outside of New York City. I, during non-coronavirus times, I am there at least once a month. And that is one of the filthiest and scariest places to be because of germs. In fact, if I touch one of those handrails, I am washing my hands regardless, even before this coronavirus thing happened. So to have that level of disinfection for now and for the future is fantastic. If you look at the top right, this is a Whole Foods market. Amazon is testing to deploy some UV robots to provide some cleaning to the supermarkets. Bottom left is a prototype from Hyundai, a car that has UV light inside of it that when no one is inside the car, so you leave the car, there's a brief disinfection before the next time you come in. And at the bottom right, this is a Boeing prototype, a high powered UV light inside their bathroom. So between uses, there is a full disinfection for this incredibly tight, cramped, and usually quite dirty place. So UV light is a solution that is being used. It is one of the I'd say major ways that we can move forward from this time, but we need to find a solution that's going to be proper for our facilities. So let's talk a little bit first about what UV light is before we talk about that solution. So UV light is on the electromagnetic spectrum. It falls between 10 and 400 nanometer wavelengths. There are four uh, wavelength, uh, let's say ranges, bandwidths inside the UV spectrum. The one that we will be talking about today is UVC, between 200 and 280 nanometers. And inside that bandwidth, there's a more specific one between 250 and 270 nanometers, which has the peak germicidal, I should say pathogenetic effect, because it's not only against germs, but against viruses and uh, fungi and mold spores as well. UV light is something that we encounter on a daily basis, and that was a pun right there, because UV light is naturally occurring from the sun. All of these uh, bandwidths are emitted from the sun, but UVC, and if you look, you'll see UVB, those two are absorbed by the ozone layer. So only UVA and UVB come through and affect us on a daily basis. Fortunately, UVC is amazing for disinfection, and we can produce it through special lamps inside of our atmosphere. How does UVC disinfect? So very similarly to different types of chemical protocols, UVC will go inside the cell of the pathogen. So other chemicals might go and glob up the cytoplasm. They might start to break down cell walls. UVC has a high enough energy that it's going to penetrate into the DNA and RNA of the pathogen. What it's going to do there is it's going to scramble that information up, making that uh, those pathogens, germs, whatever they might be, inert. So they cannot reproduce because they can't reproduce, they can't affect because it's the reproduction inside the body that causes the disease. Now, UVC doesn't discern between germs, between viruses, between mold it's able to affect all three. So it's a uniquely germicidal, antiviral, and sporicidal solution. And again, in that range between 250 and 270, the 254 nanometer bandwidth is the highest energy. It is the most efficacious at disinfection. 
that is the wavelength that all of our products fall into. The more efficacious it is, means the less time that the system has to be on, it means the more savings for you, and it means the higher efficacy of disinfection in your facility. So benefits of utilizing UVC light, and this is going to be UVC light in the sense of the system that we'll be proposing. So fixed, uh, more on a permanent base, or let's say facility-wide basis. So not just water filtration, not just air filtration. This is also going to be comparing against household cleaners and disinfectants, or I should say industrial cleaners and disinfectants. So efficacy. UVC light destroys up to 99.99% .99 of exposed airborne and surface pathogens. This is important because most of the disinfection that is normally occurring in a facility is surface only. Many germs, mold, and viruses, again, can be suspended in the air. UVC will be able to affect those airborne pathogens. Safety. So when a properly engineered system is installed, when that system has redund safety redundancies, the UVC is going to be an incredibly safe solution because at worst, there's going to be a little bit of, um, now we'll have a, a whole article on this, but at most there'll be a little bit of ozone produced. And ozone is just O3. It's a version of uh, oxygen and it's very naturally, um, let's say reverts back to the O2, which is the oxygen that we breathe. But in the meantime, we don't want a heavy dose of it. There are certain wavelengths of UV, of UV that can create ozone. A lot of the fixtures and products that you'll come across have a tiny band within them that is producing that. So at worst, and we're not just, we're not talking about our system here, we're talking about any system here, just want to be totally forthcoming with you, is that at most there'll be a little bit of ozone that's produced, but that ozone within 15 minutes, and if you have a well-ventilated room, not at all will be an impact. Unlike chemical products, where there is going to be a heavy chemical residue and odor, which can cause from irritation and headaches to nausea, fatigue, vomiting, and a slew of conditions. It is workplace friendly. So it allows for daily comprehensive disinfection. It allows the whole building to be disinfected on a daily basis. This is something that would be impossible through manual alternatives or it would require a small army of cleaners to go uh, to get a matching level of disinfection. This is future proof. So again, antiviral, sporicidal, germicidal. So that means that it's going to be effective now in the time of coronavirus. It's going to be effective in the future against any other future bug, including antibiotic resistant superbugs. So future-proof solution. It's going to also improve the quality of being inside of your facility through controlling some of the mold and those uh, pathogens. Less waste, you're not going to have to use all the rags and containers that you normally use for your cleaning products. And you won't have to change a bulb in the system for at least five years, more likely about eight, nine years. Finally, it's affordable. When you look at UVC compared to manual disinfection, compared to uh, other types of systems, it's going to come out to be a smart investment. Uh, in the short term and in the long term. We'll actually talk a little bit about budgeting towards the end of this uh, webinar. So let's get into our system here. So the main idea of this webinar here is to introduce you to UVC and to answer your questions, we'll have a Q&A starting in about six, seven minutes or so. But I do wanna go quickly over the system or a system that we offer. Now note that we're using a classroom as a sample. Every facility will be a little bit different. The solution will work well for offices, for schools, for restaurants, hotels, whatever it may be. Uh, but we want to give a visual for a sample here. So let's say the classroom solution. So the way the system works is that during normal operational hours when students are in school, there is no difference, the lights are not on, 
But late at night when the facility is unoccupied, the UV lights turn on and do the disinfection uh, unintrusively while no one is there. This is a general rendering of what a classroom would look like. So there's recessed fixtures that go in. They go and shine through the room while again, no one is there. And the rest of the normal lighting still exists in the room as it normally is. Fixtures will be about two to four per 1,000 square foot room, depending on multiple factors such as layout, what kind of room it is, reflectance of ceiling, walls and floor, furniture layout, et cetera. So some, in our design phase, we do want at least two points of light because what the two points of light allow is getting under some of these surfaces. The idea with UVC light is that whatever the light touches is disinfected. So you want maximum coverage possible. In terms of the solution here, so the system is only on when no one is in the room. We do not want anyone being under UVC light ever. And there's multiple safety redundancies to ensure that. So systems on, let's say between one and 4 a.m. when no one's in the school, if there is a desire to have the system on for 30 minutes between period five and seven, because there's no one in the room, that can be accommodated as well. Approximately one to three hours per room for 99.99% disinfection of against viruses, bacteria, and mold, two to four fixtures per room. So some of the safety features and controls that are integrated into the system include local sensors that will deactivate the fixture when any motion is detected just outside the range of the light. So that means someone's approaching, the light turns off, it stays off for some period of time, the default is 30 minutes before it comes back on. There are manual override switches for added control. There are Bluetooth controls for authorized users. So this will allow you to change the schedule for the fixture. It'll allow you to turn the system off if need be. It'll allow you to go and customize, again, the schedule and the length of operation. And then there's also remote monitoring available that is a more premium package, but something that we do know some of our clients have been requesting where we can keep an eye on the system remotely. And if something isn't operating as it should, or in, a, let's say, five, six, seven, eight years, when the lights goes out, then we know and we can go uh, make sure the system is operating as soon as possible. That said, last little safety measure I do want to mention here about the system is that everything defaults to off. That means that if something isn't working the way it should, if there's a bad contact and one of the motion sensors isn't working as it needs to be, then the system in that area, so in that classroom is going to default to off. There'll be a clear indication that it's off. You let us know and we'll go and remedy the solution again as soon as humanly possible because we want the system up and running to make sure that your facility stays disinfected and stays safe. Part of what we do is the design. So there are a lot of people running around and just hucking these solutions. Uh, there are dangers to an improperly designed system. And the other side of that is that the system's improperly designed it's not going to work. So things that we do consider is what is the height of the ceiling? What is the range of the light? Because there is a diminishing return the further away from the light source. So we need to make sure that at the farthest reach of the light, it's having enough energy that it can disinfect against the big three. We're making sure that the system is on for long enough and we can tell you, hey, if you want to disinfect against coronavirus only, it's going to take an hour, but if you wanna have that full sporicidal effect, it's gonna take three hours. We go and do some testing to make sure that the system is running as it needs to be, to make sure that what we're claiming is true. In packages, we do provide you with a uh, reader where you can go and verify that the system is working. And we also do have inside of the fixtures a little fan. And what that does is it blows some of the airborne particles that might be inhibiting the UV from penetrating through. 
And what that does is, again, increases efficacy. So safety and efficacy are our two priorities. And we have honestly over-engineered this solution here to make sure that those two are always met. So what do we do if this is something that you want to order? And I know that we have a few contractors um, and distributors on this call as well. So this is something that we'll be able to support you through. So full facility audit. So we need a floor plan and what kind of facility it is. We will provide you a brief and simple questionnaire to fill out. And from that information, we'll be able to provide fixtures and design based on your needs and based on the layout of the space. We do the calculation and programming so that the disinfection has the proper duration and time. We do all the programming and commissioning of the system controls or train you in case you want to go and override any of the uh, system there in terms of the time that it's operating during. So let's say, for example, you have one night you're doing a lock-in and people are doing a uh, overnight sleep-in, you would be able to turn off the system even though through movement the system won't kick on. This way, again, added layers of control that you have. Uh, we'll provide room-by-room -room layouts and wiring diagrams. So those of you that have your own contracting team or those of you that are contractors, we support the process to make it as easy for you as possible. Um, it, it is a simple enough system to implement. It's going to connect into the existing wiring, especially if there has been an LED upgrade, and that means that there's plenty of uh, amperage left on that uh, system to allow for our system to be implemented and installed. We do rigorous testing of all technology and systems, so we make sure that they're working as they need to, and there's expert tech support. It's a no questions asked warranty process and expert customer service. Again, we want the system up and running for you as you know, seamlessly, unintrusively, and confidently as possible. So I'm going to just skip through. This is all stuff that we've already talked about and I'm already going a little bit over my allotted time here. So I want to get here, which is something that you're probably interested in. So this is some sample project pricing. Ballpark ranges, um, they are a, let's say, median type of range, but it's going to depend on what your specific needs are. And it's going to depend again on the type of facility uh, what you want to invest in there, if you want added controls, whatever it is. But a small building, so let's say an elementary school, will be about $55,000. A medium building, uh, about like let's say middle school, about $125,000. Large building, uh, let's say a high school, is going to be uh, $190,000. This includes all of the materials that you'll need, includes all the design work, all of the engineering that is involved with the process. Uh, for a single room, it comes out to be around 2100 and that's going to be two lights and one switch. I know that we have some clients who have installed uh, or are in the process of installing a sample room. So that's something that we can offer if you want to go test the system. We'll provide you enough for just one room that you can see how it runs before implementing it through the rest of the facility. In terms of labor, uh, it's a hard estimate to give because it's also going to depend partly where you are in the country and what your uh, labor costs are uh, by you. It's going to depend on uh, what kind of pre-existing wiring you have and if it's easy to tap into the system or if new lines have to be pulled. Um, it's going to depend on multiple factors, but uh, for here in New Jersey with one of our partners, Generation Services, who does installs, uh, the price comes out to be about 25% of the material cost is labor. So as we close this off and head towards Q and A, uh, just want to go and talk about the new normal a bit. This is a time that is changing all of our lives as we know it. This is an unprecedented time in history. And it's a time when we have an opportunity to learn, to develop, and to advance. Quite honestly, this type of technology should have been implemented in our public high traffic facilities a long time ago. It is one of the best ways to contain the outbreak of disease, 
it's also an amazing way to ensure that our facilities are safer, healthier, and feel better to occupy. So I do appreciate you being on this webinar. It means that you are a forward thinker. It means that you are ready to make a change, not just in your facility, but to go and inspire other members in your communities and beyond as well to make positive changes and to learn positive lessons out of this time. So before we open up to Q&A, we do have a free webinar series. So I do a um, webinar called The Truth About Chemical Disinfectants, where we do a bit of a comparison of UVC against chemical disinfectants. The next time I'll be running that is tomorrow at noon, uh, Eastern Standard Time. So hope you join us there. And then a new webinar that we'll be launching next Friday. Um, I will be the one presenting that again, is the top five tech systems your facilities need post-pandemic. We'll be talking a little bit about UVC light, but we'll also be talking about um, some IoT systems that will be implemented inside of the schools about the extended need for virtual communication systems, as well as a few other hot uh, technologies that are coming out. So please join me for those. Um, again, these are dates to log into those. Just visit www.getpureuvc.com.